Today I'm going to talk specifically about muscle tension, um, guarding, and all of, all of how that affects everything. But first I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about why health and wellness is so important for musicians. Because I hear a lot of the time people say, and I'm going to drive this home because um, I think it's really, really important. So I'm probably going to talk about it until I'm blue in the face and you guys are going to want to smack me and tell me to shut up about it. But I'm still going to talk about it. It is so important for musicians to be healthy on every level. And that means looking at how you play your instrument. It looks at how you approach your instrument, your habits that you have when you're actually practicing and when you're performing, um, making sure that you are you know, eating well, staying hydrated, um, you know, stress management, all of these different things. Hey, Susanna, how are you? Um, so it, it, it's really all about wellness and staying as healthy as you possibly can so that you can avoid injuries. You know, sports medicine is a huge thing in this country, you know, and it's a huge thing because people get injured all the time and people have career altering injuries where they have to stop playing, okay? Sports medicine is huge. Musician medicine, not so huge. Like there's not a big thing about it. And why, why is A, because sports generates a ton of money, right? Um, and it's out there in the public all the time. Um, unfortunately, musicians, we sort of, we don't talk about our injuries a lot of the time. And we hopefully more often than not do not have career altering injuries. Some people do, I did, um, and but it's not the norm. But we have injuries all the time. People end up with injuries all the time. And it doesn't necessarily stop you from your career and pursuing your career, but it stops you at the time and it stops you in your track. So maybe you're preparing for a gig, maybe you're in the middle of a recording session and you've got all this pain and all these different symptoms that's preventing you from playing. So if you can do as much as you possibly can to avoid those symptoms and those issues in the first place, that is the key. That is the most important thing. So that's why I kind of really I really want to drive home the importance of looking at musicians from a holistic standpoint, all right, from a holistic standpoint. So I just had um, one of my patients this morning telling me about a friend of hers that's a musician in another state and how they're going for therapy, which is great. And I said, well, are they looking at his technique? Are they looking at him play? Are they looking at all these different things? And unfortunately, they hadn't been. Um, and it's not because they're not, they're not a good therapist, they just didn't know to look at all those things. Um, so it's important to really have the knowledge so that you can go, if you're in another state, go and say, can you look at me while I play and advocate for yourself and say, okay, you know, I think this might be a contributing factor to some of my symptoms. Um, so it's always, knowledge is power and knowledge is prevention. So I'm gonna get off my soapbox now and I'm gonna talk about the topic of the day, but I'm gonna get on that soapbox a lot. So sorry if you get sick of it. So today I want to talk about muscle tension, and I don't know if you saw um, my post that I did with um, your issues have tissue, your tissues have issues, um, but muscle tension, we all get it. We all have it, you know, um, life in general can be stressful and we all get it. Hey Sarah, how, all are, how are you? Hope all's going well. End of the semester. Oh my goodness. How many weeks are left? Probably maybe two, I'm thinking, maybe two. Um, anyways, so back to muscle tension. So we all have it. We all hold it. And what happens? Oh, sorry. I'm getting sidetracked with comments. I asked my patients to bring that. Good job, Andy. Awesome. I love that. That's huge. And you're a musician. So you, you know, you're ther Andy's a therapist and a musician and he's, um, he's really, uh, getting, getting all that down and, and having patients look, look at them while they're playing, which is awesome. So muscle tension. All right, so it's important in life in general because when we are tense, our muscles are not getting the oxygen, the nutrients that need. They're constantly in the state of contraction, all right? That constant state of contraction makes them tired and makes them cranky, all right, over time, all right? And if you're in that position for a long time, it's gonna get tired and cranky. When we are at our instruments, we're playing under tense circumstances. We're doing very finite things, trying to control, trying to focus on all the other things that have to do with music. We're trying to focus on our intonation. We're trying to focus on you know, our, what, what our dynamic is, who else we're playing with, our musicality, our phrasing, our breath, all these different things, and the technique that we're trying to, to, to play. Some of those licks are not fun. So they create muscle tension in and of themselves, but, 
I have seen so many musicians use so much tension, whether it be on their keys or on their string or on the neck of their um, violin or viola or guitar. Um, so that's the point where they're actually co-contracting all of their muscles. And when I say co-contracting, I mean you're contracting, so you're depressing your keys or you're depressing your strings, but at the same time, you have so much tension that you're actually contracting the back muscles as well. So in order to bend down and depress your strings and your keys, you have to use your flexor muscles, which are on this side, all right? And it should be a nice, relaxed motion, all right? You should be able to do this. What happens sometimes is people get so tense and it could be because the piece is really hard. It could be just their, their habit that they've created this muscle tension. It could be any number of things, and that's why it's important to really look at them and watch them. Um, but they end up contracting the back side as well. So this is the extensor side that does this. So when you're contracting both sides and you're tense, look at how tense my hand is, right? And I try to move, oh my God, it's so uncomfortable. It is so uncomfortable, there's so much tension. And I feel it all the way down into my forearm, okay? So some of this is habit that happens. We kind of are holding on for dear life um, because we're trying to work too hard. So it's a matter of trying to figure out how much tension do I really need to get the sound out that I want, have the right intonation, and get my emotion across, all right? And I have patients work on this in a number of different ways. Um, sometimes I have patients really press down hard with all their might and then lighten up, lighten up, lighten up, lighten up, lighten up until they just about lose their sound and then they come back down to the tension that they need, all right? And it's one note at a time, whole notes, that's it. You're not playing any pieces, you're not playing scales, you're not playing arpeggios, you're playing long tones. Boring as all get out, but it starts to retrain your brain and your muscles. So how much tension do I need in my hand to actually play what I need to play in the sound and quality that I want to play it at? The other way to work at it is as light as possible and then come down, all right? So for every patient, it's a little bit different in terms of how you respond and how you learn, um, but that is the key. So I want you guys to think about, you know, what tension are you using when you're actually playing? And you may not have symptoms now, and that's great, but the goal is we don't want you to have symptoms in the future, and if you do get symptoms in the future, you kind of have things to think about to look at. Be like, okay, what do I need to, what do I need to think about? So one thing you need to think about is the muscle tension that you're using when you're actually playing your instrument, okay? The tension in your hand, the tension in your shoulders. The other thing, so it's not just with um, the tension on your strings or your keys, it's also the tension possibly in your shoulder. So some people will kind of do this, all right? See my shoulder going up? And it's kind of hanging out there and I'm playing, all right? I may be playing like this. I don't need to have the shoulder contracted. It doesn't need to be contracted, all right? But it's a habit, all right? I got into a habit of doing that. I didn't, but I'm just saying that some people do. So you can get into a habit of doing this and you're not even aware of it, all right? So most of our habits, we don't even know that we're doing, they're just automatic. They're just natural, they're automatic. So awareness is the first step. Once you're aware of what you're doing, then you can go on and um, break it down and start to switch some of these, all right? So is there tension anywhere else in your body, all right? That's the other huge thing you wanna think about that. Do I need to be hiking my shoulder up? No, probably not. You can just relax that. And it's gonna be a matter of um, taking sticky pads and putting them all over your practice room. Remember to do this. Pressure, how much pressure am I using? I like to use sticky pads all the time. Or the phone is kind of annoying if you set an alarm for that, but that gets kind of annoying. So sticky pads, every time you look up, you see a note, okay, tension, reminds you, okay, think about that. Um, so it's not just though with playing your instrument and the tension that you're using while you're actually playing. It's also about what tension you're doing in general life. How are you muscle guarding? Stress and everything creates muscle tension and we tend to guard, all right? So are you holding tension in certain places in your body that may then also affect your playing later on at some point in time? So we all do these silly little habits. I'll tell you a specific example. I went for a run the other day and um, I've noticed this before, but it came up again because I was thinking about habits and tension and that kind of thing. And I run, so when I run, I, for some reason, I'm gonna stand up, I run like this. For some reason, I'm always hitchhiking with my left thumb. I guess I wanna ride. I guess I don't really wanna be running. Um, but my thumb always goes into that position. 
All right, now if I'm out for a long run, if I'm doing like 13 miles or whatever, that's a long time for my thumb to be in that position. That's not good, all right? I'm irritating the joint, I'm irritating the muscles all in through here, and it's a habit. I don't even realize I'm doing it. Once I become aware of it, I'm like, oh, and I bring my thumb down. And then probably two minutes later, it's back up there, hitchhiking again, looking for a ride so I don't have to complete my run. Um, but it's those kinds of things throughout the day. Some people will, um, will rest their wrists into wrist extension. They'll sort of hold their arm up in this position when they're just sitting at the desk. So that constant contraction of their forearm creates fatigue and muscle tension which then can lead to injuries further down the line. So don't just look at what you're doing at your instrument. I want you to think about, is there tension anywhere else in your body that might be um, causing some of the issues that are, that are adding to it? So muscle tension, you want as little as possible. You wanna make sure that you're not having any habits of um, guarding and holding certain positions for a long period of time, like my hitchhike position. Um, and just start to think about some of those things. Sticky notes are a good, good thing. Um, sometimes you wanna maybe videotape yourself playing and you can see um, and just scan your body. And sometimes you just need somebody to um, come and poke on you. That's what I do a lot with my patients when I have them bring their instruments and they play for me and I assess their technique and I'm constantly touching and feeling what their muscles are doing so I can see where that energy is at and do you need that much energy? Because when you're that tense, it comes across. It totally comes across when you're playing. So the more relaxed you can be, the more open you're gonna be when you actually play. So it's a whole energetic thing as well.